Hey guys. Come on in, come on in. Can everybody hear me okay? This is gonna be a fun live stream. We're gonna be working on some, let me fix this light. We're gonna be working on some updates to the 2D graphics for the game. In particular, the menus, the UI, the pause screen, the choose your weapon screen. We want it all to be gorgeous. So we're kind of like 25% there. I would, I'm honestly, I'd argue we're about 50% there. Um, mainly because we've got the hard work done, which is understanding what style we even want to go for. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. Let's see here. Oh, welcome new students, Nicholas Smith. Man, I forgot. Crap. Hang on one sec, guys. Let's, let's figure out who some of our new students are. I'm going to open up the school really quick. And these are new students who enrolled in YouTube Game Dev. So I wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to also Todd Bozeman. Welcome, welcome. David Scalia. Oh, let's see here. Goodness gracious. Where are they? Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, Todd Bozeman, Axie Pepe, Dillian Babin, Dylan Nicole, Ethan Sladen, Tang Lejed, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, just wanted to say a huge thank you to those of you who did join YouTube Game Dev uh, yesterday. Guys, when you join my online courses, obviously it's an investment in your future, but also it supports the channel. So a huge, huge thank you. So if you're interested in joining YouTube Game Dev, you can get 40% off below. Um, there are 200 seats total available, 11 days left. After this timer's done, it for real will close. Yes, it will actually close. So be sure to check it out below. You're gonna learn everything that I know about being a YouTuber and a game dev. How you can take YouTube and create YouTube content and then monetize and get wish lists and sell your games and sell your digital products, um, get sponsorships, get ad revenue, the list goes on. There's a ton of ways to make money from YouTube as a game developer to support your studio. So click the link below if you're interested. All right, guys, I will see you inside of Photoshop in just a second. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's first start off with what we want our UI to look like. UI is the... It's kind of the stitching that holds your game together, especially if your game is highly thematic. Like let's say you're making a World War II game or you're making a fantasy game. You wanna make sure that the UI does what the artwork sometimes can't. Let's say you have a limited budget. Let's say you are um, struggling to create characters that really capture that World War II vibe, right? Or that fantasy vibe. Well, you can use UI to sort of inform the player almost as a, a constant motif in front of the player's face, letting them know, hey, this game is about this, right? So in our case, our game is about creepy, weird Disney World Willy Wonka theme park vibes. That's, that's what we're aiming for, okay? And so our UI needs to reflect this, all right? So it needs to reflect everything that we've got right here, okay? So the bull says, how do you make money as a game dev? Do anything other than game dev. Be a YouTube or a crypto bro, or just get a job. Well, the bull, I understand the bull skepticism, I really do, um, because there's a lot of YouTubers out there who, who talk about how to make money and how to do get a, like, have a dream job, um, and they're liars. But the truth is, is that we are currently published with 3D Realms, and we are making a game called Twisted Tower. Um, 
So I'm actually doing what I teach. So I just have multiple businesses. That's how I've been doing things for the last six years. Um, so we're gonna work on this 3D Realms game, Twisted Tower, and we're gonna get this thing, the UI looking Disney-esque. Okay, so we have this image here. We worked on this yesterday, and this is sort of just a, a splash, and this is what I recommend everybody do when you're making your game. Have splash screens, wallpapers available, constant imagery available, even print it out and put it on your wall, reminding you of what your core visual identity is for your game. Okay, in our case, again, it's this Willy Wonka, creepy, uncanny vibe. All right, so let's open up Unity here. And I'm just gonna enter play mode. Let's see here. Yeah, let's enter play mode. And I wanna show you the UI we have currently for just standard on-screen graphics, okay? So let's hit play, take a look. <laughs> Nick Dev Prod says, Thomas, the majority of your income is from courses. Maybe this year. Um, no, 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 it's not. This year it's from, it's from um, making games. So, sorry. Um, it, it ebbs and flows. It's kind of 50-50. Um, okay, so we've got our, our UI here. Um, I don't think, Nick, Nick Def Prod, I'm not sure you're aware. I've been making video games for, I think, over a decade. Full-time for seven years. The first four years was Kickstarter campaigns. It was partnering with publishers. We did an Apple deal. Um, we sold our, our, a license to Apple. Uh, multiple Kickstarter campaigns, six figures, um, multiple partnerships with publishers, and also just game sales, hitting the Steam front page, working with Humble Bundle. So I've done like the whole six, there's like six, seven different ways to make money. I figured out all of them, and I sort of just do them all. So I'm constantly spinning plates. But I understand the skepticism, and I appreciate it. Okay. So there's our UI, right? We've updated the UI to look really clean and crisp. And so we need to reflect that in what we're going to work on today, which is our weapon wheel, okay? The weapon wheel, the problem with the weapon wheel isn't that it, it, it's not pretty. It's pretty. The problem is I'm not sure exactly what the theme is. So again, we, we need to hearken to the theme. An example that I love to look at, and let's all do this together. I want to, I want to sort of, um, I want to do this together here because I think you guys can help me. I thought about it before the live stream. I was like, you know, it'd probably re be really cool to get everybody's opinion on this. So the Alice Madness Returns game is something we're really sort of focused on. We're really, as a team, we're, we're getting a lot of inspiration from this game. If we type in Alice Madness Returns UI or menu, you could see that the menu system is very on, point, on theme, right? It's very, very on theme. And so we, what we want to do here is we want to think, okay, we're in a game show. It's Walt Disney. What can we think of that's a wheel shape when we open up our weapon wheel? Again, let's open it up just to show you. So if I open up my weapon wheel, what can we, what can we put here visually? We could do a flower maybe, right? Some flower petals. Um, we could do, I don't know, a peppermint that's cracked. There's a lot of different visuals we can, we can choose and I'm, sure, I'm curious which ones you guys think we should do. The game is about a studio uh, executive named Mr. Twister who has all these cool children's movies and he's created this theme park, right? So what could we do here? What can we do here? Anybody have any ideas for this weapon wheel? A flower could work. It could work. I, I don't know if there's any fl like flowers in the game. A film reel? No. Maybe a clock. Maybe a clock, but that I don't know if that's... It, I, you know, it could be just like a spiraling flower. Um, which chat do I actually see? I see all the chats. I see all the, a Ferris wheel, there you go. A Ferris wheel, huh? That's kind of cool. 
Yeah, that might work. I'm trying to think how we would show that. A spinning wheel like on a TV show. So it's got like a spiral and little tickers. Like little ticks here. That might be cool. I kind of like that. Like Price is Right, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, so let's think about Price is Right. Let's, let's go ahead and look at the Price is Right spinner. Spin the wheel. Yeah, a roulette wheel. That's kind of cool, guys. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. So this is not it. That's not that's not correct. Maybe they had an older one. I don't know. I, I didn't know it was in that direction. Okay, let's do uh, what's what, what was it? Roulette wheel. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so basically you'd have the, the little arrow pointed at, I don't know if roulette wheel, maybe spin the wheel. Spin the wheel game. Jeopardy wheel, yeah. That's kind of cool. We could definitely do that. Hmm. Yeah. Let's type in Jeopardy wheel. Yeah, it's, it's, I think we could do something like this with different colors. And we need to try and figure out how to get it to work within our current color scheme. Kind of just have to sit here and think. This is, this is one of the hardest parts of game development, which is being willing to just sit quietly and to think. How many of you always, when you're working on a new game, you feel like this constant need to be productive and get stuff done? When in reality, you just need to sit, be quiet, and think. Let's type in vintage spin the wheel. Let's see what we can find. Ooh. So the question is what makes it look like a spin the wheel game, right? And I think it's the, the little the little uh, arrow, right? Like this. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what it is. That one's kind of cool. A carnival wheel. Let's type that in. <clears throat> carnival wheel. I want to find one that really captures it. Because some of these, they don't really capture the feeling, you know? And so you want to make sure it really people know exactly what you're doing with this wheel. Hmm. That one, I know that's just some cheap Amazon thing, but that kind of gives me a vibe that I'm looking for, you know? Um, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. But we also need, we also need a little arrow, a little dial that follows around. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So I'm curious if we could go ahead and program that. Um, basically, this the, the rotation of the dial piece follows the mouse. I know, Hawkman. That's a really cool idea. Hawkman says, make it so the wheel literally spins and the weapon at the top is selected. That's a really cool idea. I just... Also, I don't even know if players would, they would, I, I don't know if they would get it. Yeah, I don't know if they would get it. I know, I know, have the menu rotate. Guys, I don't know how to do it though. I mean, I know how to do it. I just don't want to spend four hours doing it. You got to figure like what's worth your time, you know? Um, and also what are gamers used to? Are they used to that? Rotating the wheel. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I'm not gonna, I, I, I'm worried it'll be annoying. It might not be, and you guys might be right, but I'm just, 
I don't know if it's worth the risk. You know, it's it's really funny. There's like um, this new thought process I've been having, especially as we've have, we have a budget with 3D Realms. We have a schedule with 3D Realms. Everything has to be thoughtfully uh, budgeted, even when it comes to just time. Is it worth the time? So a lollipop. You know, I think we're gonna go with the lollipop. Yeah, there. That's amazing. Rapid Dev, can we get a, a round of applause to Rapid Dev? We're gonna do a lollipop, and it's also the the cheapest. Okay. So let's do the lollipop. And that's actually super duper simple. So did you guys see what just happened here? For the last 15 minutes, we patiently sat and just thought. And that is so important. I'm not being sarcastic. That is so important when you're making games to just sit and think, how do I connect this to my theme? How do I connect this to my hook, okay? Now, what have we what have we um, learned in the past four or five months? Does anybody remember? Does anybody remember what the Trinity hook is? What is the Trinity hook? Anybody know what the Trinity hook is? We've talked about this. And by the way, those of just those of you just joining us, just remember if you want to join my program, YouTube Game Dev below. It is the sponsor of today's video, and it does support the channel. It keeps us independent, guys, so we can just make YouTube content however we want. Um, so I love to sponsor myself. Um, so check out the link below if you want to learn how to become a YouTuber and how to monetize your channel and monetize it around game development. Um, if any, is anybody a student of YouTube Game Dev, by the way? Let me know in the chat what you think about the program. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, open up our weapon wheel, okay? So the weapon wheel is, the beauty of this is it's just one big Photoshop document, okay? And so it's gonna be pretty straightforward actually getting this to be a lollipop. We can make it look cracked. We can make it look like there's sort of cracks going through through the lollipop. First, I just wanna put a spiral on it. And uh, I think what we could probably do actually is just take all of these. Good, okay, so Ronald BC gave, gave us what the the Trinity hook is. The Trinity hook is the story hook, the visual hook, and the mechanical hook, okay? So the story hook, the visual hook, and the mechanical hook. By the way, let's go ahead and open up the UI as well. The reason I'm bringing that up is because, are you noticing that everything that we're doing, everything that we're doing in this polishing phase where we're basically sprinting to the, to the launch, everything is sort of pointing back to the hook. So in the case of the UI, everything we do with the hook or with the UI is based on the hook, okay? So our, um, our visual hook is basically a first person fairy tale, a first person shooter fairy tale, right? Okay, so let's make everything feel like an Alice in Wonderland fairy tale. So we have this cool spiral here. And I think we can use, yeah, it's a, it's a vector so we can use it. We're gonna bring it back to the weapon wheel here, and we're gonna use this as our lollipop. Now the question is, does a lollipop have a spiral, right? That's, that's a good question. I think it does, but we're gonna make it perfect, right? Perfect shape here. And we're going to just create a circle here. Just like this, perfect size, the exact size of our UI. Something that I wanted to talk to you guys about, I was thinking about it earlier today, that I wanted to let you know. Um, when you're making, um, when you're working on your UI, it's probably best to just get the generic UI, get the functionality down, okay? So I have uh, our developer, his name is Gordon, he's brilliant. Gordon is putting together various UI elements, um, and also AJ, he put together a lot of UI elements as well. Um, and those UI elements, I told them what I needed, what the functionality which should, be, should be, and it's just very simple squares and blocks with text. So now that we know what the functionality is, we can craft our, our sort of a narrative and a, and a visual theme around the UI. And so that's what we're doing here. Sure, we've got a weapon wheel that works. Now we're gonna theme it, right? I'm gonna blur the background here because it's uh, kind of bugging me. 
because it's not the same visual identity anymore. Okay. No, we're going to replace the black with the red, but I want to look at what a lollipop actually looks like. Lollipop cartoon. What's the quintessential lollipop? There it is. That is quintessential lollipop. And so we could even maybe go a little bit skeuomorphic here. Does anybody know what skeuomorphic is? What does skeuomorphic mean? Anybody know what skeuomorphic means? The less UI, the better. Modern day games are plagued with too much screen information. Have you seen Suicide Squad? That's from Damo. The UI looks sick. Rapid Dev said, woohoo, my, my idea is in the game. That's right, good idea. Let's type in lollipop and see if we get a cool spiral here. So there's like a peppermint spiral right there, right? But I kind of want it to be like this and we do, I'm trying to visualize it here. Yeah, I think what we had is actually easier. So we're gonna go back to what we had. Um, I think maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, put it over top that. I'm gonna hide the wheel currently, the, the old wheel. Um, and this is all we're gonna do. So white and red. So let's go find our, our red in our UI. This is our current red right there. Very simple. Color overlay and try and make, make sure when you're doing your UI guys and just your branding in general that everything has a very similar color scheme. Right? Now the question is how do you make it look like a lollipop? Um, that's, that's a really good question. <sighs> Let's see here. Do we have any lollipops that have that kind of a spiral? That one, yeah. So I think the red, hmm, it might have to do with beveling, you know? Um, I'm not sure. It could also have to do with the stick at the bottom. Um, it could be that it's just it just needs a bevel, you know? Um, and then also, just remember, it also needs to fit on top of this. Hang on. Okay, give me just a sec, guys. We're going to take a break, okay? I'll be right back.
There we go. All right, guys. All right, let's take a look here. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, so that's kind of the idea right there. It's like broken, but so so what we could do is could, we could make like um, cracks, maybe like it's cracked candy, and each one is your gun. Um, that could work. Hmm. Yeah, that could work. So let's see what happens when we crack it. But it might, this might be too, too much. You know, it might be too much, uh, too skeuomorphic for, for me to be okay with it. So we shall see. It might be too skeuomorphic. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. It may be a little too skeuomorphic for my taste. The crack is coming gonna come from the middle, almost like the the candy got shot. Right? Beveling it is an idea, I agree. I'm just worried that beveling it will make it too skeuomorphic, right? This might work right here. Crack going up the middle. Just one, just one to give it some clarity. You gotta think about what would candy do though, you know? You do something like that. I'm looking at my right screen on my right screen i can see you guys i can see the chat but i can also see a small version of this okay um you can see right here well it was there you can see it happen really quick on my right side is that my screen and i can see a small version of my screen and it tells me how i'm doing because the smaller it when it's super small it helps you know um for some reason, when things are small, it's easier to distinguish if you're doing a good job and if it looks good. Um, so let's let's try this here. Clips wants to do something called feature creep. Clips, <laughs> just kidding, kind of. Clips wants us to make it so that the less ammo you have, the more cracked it is, which is a great idea, but I don't know if we have the time. Um, Well, Damo says something that I'm actually going to argue with. Damo, I do agree with you on most things, okay, uh, that are similar to what you're saying, which is like, if the, if the player's not gonna see it a lot, it doesn't matter. But stuff like this does. So it's tiny little, li any, any place that you can throw in a, a motif that connects to your hook, the better. Um, it's tiny little things that make players remember the game. Um, so an example is like in Hollow Knight, um, the tiny um, boiling of the health, I think it's a boiling, it's like a, it's like a visual that has like movement. That is huge and it's just a subtle thing. 
Another is like cutting grass or um, I'm trying to think of any other games that have very subtle motifs. Can you guys think of any where it's like you don't see it a lot, but because of that one thing, it made you love the game, right? Menus and UX feel definitely plays a part in giving a vibe. Yeah, I agree. But I do agree with whoever said that on most things. Um, but in this case, I think this is super duper important. Look, we can crack, we can make the edges a little bit more like these rounded parts. We can make them look feel a little bit more like they are a broken candy. And look, watch this, watch. If I do this, these little rounded pieces will look more like they're part of like a coil, like they are two separate threads that were spiraled. Watch this, see? And I'm looking at my right monitor here. Sometimes you don't really wanna do it. That one I think is fine, at least every once in a while. What we don't want is that we don't want it to look like pizza. We need to be careful. And then the next question is, well, man, where do we put the guns? You know, um, that's another question. I think we might need to do icons. Um, I'm not sure. Thomas, what's your favorite game? <sighs> right now, it's probably. Um, um, Alice. Madness returns. Um, we're gonna be very, very strategic here with this spiral. We're gonna think about where the guns are gonna be located and we're gonna make sure that it's not too vibrant where the guns are located. Oh man, without that red though, gosh. We gotta be very, very strategic here, guys. And yes, obviously you want to, I'm gonna go ahead and just merge these layers together. Um, we'll do that, one more. Um, merge those layers together and we're gonna do a bevel like you guys mentioned. I'm just worried about the bevel because I'm worried that it won't match the rest of the game because the rest of the UI is very, very clean. And so you just wanna make sure that you, you're matching it. So that's that and does it match this? Let's hit play and take a look. All right, there's our current UI. Twist that, that right there is wrong. I don't know why it's all caps. Let's see here. Startup, ah, yes. I wanna make sure that floor one and all the other floors aren't caps. Let's double check. Good, they're not, okay. Let's go to floors, uh, floor, back to floor zero. So floor zero, um, we just need to make sure it's not caps. So if we hit play, you can see the title come in and it's not caps, which is a big deal. It's gonna look way better. There we go. So if we pause it, let's just keep that at our disposal. Actually, let's go ahead and just take a screenshot of this so that we know exactly what our UI looks like. Go into Photoshop here, and I'm gonna have this in the corner here just so I know, okay, are we on point? And I think we might actually be um, cause you can see there's some beveling going on. So I think we're might, we actually might be okay. It's a very, very subtle skeuomorphic effect. Very subtle. Yeah. Yeah. And we could potentially add in shines. Um, I still don't know where, where we're going to put the weapons though. That's, that's the trouble here. Where are we going to put the weapons? Now, what we want to make sure we do is probably put the shadow on the other side. So over here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's try this out. This one looks a little bit too much like pizza right here, um, but I think we might be okay. Are you using a mouse or a tablet? I'm using the world's greatest mouse. 
the MX3. Hey, Paul. How you doing, man? Add a little bit of shine here. I'm just looking at the, my monitor over here to see if it looks any good. This one's incorrect. So you'll notice that we're gonna basically put this shine where that, on the edge that the bevel is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, everything, everything needs to point back to our hook. Everything has to point to the hook. I would argue that is the most important aspect. Oh man, I, I know gameplay is important, but man, there's some games where the gameplay is fine, it's not great, and yet because they focused on their hook, it was great. So there's there's part of me that thinks the hook is is really that important. Add a little drop shadow. When you focused on your hook and pointing everything back to it, it's so important. Okay, so there's our our our, our lollipop. And I don't know if we need to do anything different with it other than maybe like a flourish over here. We could do like a flourish. Let's see, what, what kind of flourish could we do? Yeah, we could do something like this. We wanna be very, very gentle. UI is one of those things, guys, where you have to figure out a way to add detail without it screwing up the players. Um, or without it confusing the player. So this one right here, we have this flourish, right? We could make it match that here and do something like a fade out like that. And flourishes are important, or it's important to do symmetry on flourishes. Yeah. Something like that. Is there anything we could do to really land the plane here in terms of making this feel like candy? Yes or no? Does it look like candy? Yes, it looks like candy. No, it doesn't look like candy. The stick. I know, but guys, I feel I just feel weird about the stick. I don't know why. So you feel like we need a stick right here? What if we do that, we need to rotate it like this. And that's going to be a pain in my butt cuz we're going to have to reposition all of them <laughs> in the UI. Um yeah, so you guys feel like we really really need a stick. Of course. I want to show you guys some music I, I, I made. Um, let's see here, one sec. I'm going to pull up some of the music so you guys get a, uh, how it sounds. I'm really enjoying it. How do I get music or sound? Application audio capture. There it is. Yeah, I wanna show you guys this music while we work. So I wrote this yesterday for the, the underwater level. All 
Alright, let's go. Wait, what? Oh yeah, it's playing. No, it's not. Hang on. Let's start it over. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want you guys to hear it. Watch, if you do this and then flip it, you make it look like there's cuts in the wood. Especially if you do overlay. Yeah, it does sound like Walking Dead. That looks great. Good, maybe a little bit bigger. And then we'll fade it out of the bottom. Yeah. No, this isn't the main theme. This is the uh, the uh, underwater theme. Guys, looks pretty good. Thank you for your help on this one. Um, just a very subtle. Yeah, it does. It's got. It's definitely got a Half Life vibe, but it, it does sound like Walking Dead as well. It's probably the, it could be the same chord progression. I don't know. You want it to be more glossy, huh? I don't know why. Oh, we didn't rotate it, that's why. I think we need a little bit of detail on the left side of this. Like a dark black almost. A dark, yeah, just black. And maybe a highlight over here. Should look like you could lick it. You know what we could do? The spiral needs a bevel, huh? And then a drop shadow. One there. But then we take the other one, that, and then add a bevel to that. Close, but no cigar, hmm. Thirty. Let me show you guys another track I wrote. I'm really enjoying writing these tracks. Um, let's see here, one sec. Oh, this one's great. Listen, this, it's so important to get into the mood while you're working. And so sometimes I'll throw it, this is like a 10 minute ambient track with music that I wrote. And I'll just play it while I work because I want to be in the right mindset, especially during these 
final polishing sprints. I think it needs to be set to overlay, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, we need to do overlay for the other one. For all of them, actually. Yeah. So this song is called Huggy Hotel. The other one was called Mermaid Palace. Don't freeze, Photoshop. Getting there. That red one, there needs to be a highlight right here, so I can't really see it. Let's crank that up. There we go. But you want it to be subtle, guys. Yeah, we're getting there. Have I saved recently? <laughs> A little too shadowy in the middle, isn't it? We need to kill the. That bevel's a little weird, honestly. Set it to overlay. Overlay. It's. Do you see? Do you guys hopefully see why it's so important to look at your, look at your image from far away? All right. So I don't need to draw up shadow. Not yet. We're gonna just subtly add a shadow there. No, this is UI, Miss Cloud, or Sean. Okay. Now, now the question is, how do we communicate which weapons are which, right? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. We got to think. We got to be clever. Do you think it's viable to make educational game dev content in short form to get wishlist? God of gods, you gotta be thinking about where, what your end goal of your content is. And guys, don't feel bad about it. It's okay to think about the end goal of your content. It'll keep you sane because you'll be receiving, whether it's a paycheck, wish lists, email subscribers, or feedback, anything. It's good to get results and that encourages you to keep making content because making content can be boring and difficult and you can burn out. So it's very, very important for you to actually know what your call to action is. Um, know what your call, call to action is. Um, so if your call to action is, hey, wishlist my game, then educational content is probably not your goal. You should probably be creating uh, edutainment, like Danny stuff. Doesn't have to be like Danny, but you get hopefully you get the idea. All right, so what are we gonna do? <laughs> about our UI here. Well, I know we have our icons for our guns. So let's just start with the ax. We could do that. And then do a little drop shadow, you know? It could be a glow or a drop shadow. The glow. I'm looking at a smaller screen, so I'm looking to my right over here. And I'm kind of feeling like the shadow is hurting it. Whereas we could do something like this. So 
Silhouette, I don't know. Um, man, I don't even know if it needs anything. I think we might actually be okay, guys. And we'll have the, the weapon sort of flare out in a fan. Um, that could be cool. Maybe a subtle, subtle black drop shadow. Maybe even with some distance to make it look like it's actually floating. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Ooh, my heart just beat really hard because I liked it. Red Panda Dev says it looks better than I expected. Well, thank you for having so much, so much faith in me, Red Panda. All right, let's move on. <laughs> On to the next one, which is a pistol. Do we not have a pistol graphic? What the F? Well, I, th I could have sworn we did. Uh-oh. <sighs> Thomas, are you releasing Twisted Tower this year? Yes. So let's figure out where this goes now. Could do that. I have always felt weird for some reason about them sort of flaring out. I don't know why it bothers me like that. Oh, this is gonna get tough. I don't know guys it could be that we stop it it could be that we just shrink it like that is that big enough guys for those of you who play first-person shooter games in a weapon wheel is this fine that size And they sort of just all flare out. Is that fine, you think? Yeah? Okay. It's getting a little too messy, I'll tell you that. Transform, flip horizontal. I'm not liking the messiness of it, but we're gonna keep moving. I just don't know if I need a drop shadow. Dead Island weapon wheel. You guys want to take a look at that? Dead Island UI weapon wheel. Oh yeah. Thank you for rep thank you so much. Um, who was that? Michael Whaley, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Okay, Damo, thank you. There just needs to be some, well, the truth is guys, that all of these are gonna be faded out, except for the one that's highlighted. So that's that's good, but it's also a problem because then you're not gonna know it's a lollipop. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of questions here, but we're gonna go for it. So you guys feel like we need a drop shadow? I just feel like it's too far away from the gun. Okay, did the music stop? Because I wanna keep listening. Let's listen more. We're gonna copy that layer style. Paste layer style. 
Pace Layer style. If I faded it out, would you still know? I think you would. Yeah. Yeah, you'd still know. I think the floor, you look guys, you gotta be very, very uh, selective with what you actually put on the screen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very careful. I wanna clean it up here. This guy here, we're gonna fade out the top. Very selective. Also these two here. What if the guns were silhouettes? I mean, I, I think one of you already mentioned that, but we can try it. Like that, with a stroke. The problem is we don't really use strokes in the game that much. Let's enter play mode here and see. All right. We could make it match that heart, actually. I think that you might be onto something. Uh-oh, looks like our UI got screwed up here. Good, there we go, okay. Yeah, I think actually we do use strokes, so I think we could probably do that. That's a really good idea. So let's go to our weapon wheel here, and we're going to just add a, I would say like a black stroke, a thin one of like six, and then another stroke of 12. Set it to normal, full opacity, and then make it match the candy. It could be that we need to invert it. And the color overlay, perhaps we do. No. No, no, doesn't look good. There are just certain things that just don't look good and you just don't know why. They have to stick out because we just don't have enough room. Too many swirls, we'll just go nuts. We'll get crazy. What about a little icon like this? Like a circle? And um, maybe it could be black with a white stroke. And then the icon could maybe be inside of it. That, I'm feeling it right here, actually. This could work. It looks interesting. Does it still look like a lollipop? I don't know, kind of. It almost looks like the circles are embedded in the candy, which is kind of cool. Strange. Bioshock Infinite did something similar, what did they do? It does kind of look like a revolver, which is cool. I mean, it's not a, it doesn't, bug me too much um, and then we can just do white or cream it does it kind of looks like can't oh man candy corn that's a great idea dang it Uh, 
Candy corn. Yeah, you could also do lollipops. That's a great idea. Lollipop. I'm just gonna type in lollipop, gonna find a lollipop here. And we're gonna think about, I'm worried that we just don't I'm worried we're not communicating the right thing here. Like a, a lollipop fan. Not that. Like, I'm talking like, um, gush, gosh, let's see here. Gush. I'm gonna group all this and just save it. And um, that's the overlay. If I go, to, if I type in lollipop here, festival lucky wheel. No, we already did that. Um, but it's a good idea. We already did it. Like, if you took this, for example, this is too detailed, but if you had this, and you did like a bunch of lollipops, like this, what would it look like? That could work. And you pick your lollipop, and on the lollipop is the gun, the icon of the gun. Yeah, that's an idea. Let's try that. But we need it to be a better, a very simple uh, lollipop. So let's 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 try this option here. This one actually is simpler than the other one, and there's not as much work that needs to be done. So let's type in spiral. Nice and simple spiral. Uh, do a red color overlay. You want it to be pretty long. This could work actually. I I'm feeling like this is probably, um, a lot of you, Rapid Dev, your idea was awesome, but it was getting a little too complex. So let's see if we can solve this. By doing this. Let's try that. I don't think there's enough room, you know? Got like 10 lollipops. This might be even worse. No. Okay, no to the lollipop idea. I don't know if it looks like a lollipop anymore. That I mean, that's just the problem, isn't it? Is just, um, we, it, you don't really know where to put the weapons. I mean, do you take it and put it here? Maybe like behind it? 
you know? And then you gotta go, well, where do I put the ammo? That might work, actually. Like this. And then you take the... Mmm, we're so close. We're so close. Red Dead Redemption weapon wheel. No. Um, yeah, we could do that just fade out the candy so it's not so intense I think that's probably the best solution um, kind of like this the problem is it really loses its impact so we might need to make it more red yeah Maybe we just, just use the actual. Gosh. The whole thing turned the alpha down. Let's see what candy corn looks like. That one. Just to see really quick what this looks like. Give me a candy corn PNG, please. Yeah, like the question is what kind of shapes out there are triangular that also fit in with the sort of Disney Alice in Wonderland vibe, you know? Yeah, Rapid Dev, what? What you saying? Candy broken in the shape of weapons? No, that's too detailed. It's too detailed. Now that looks weird too. I think this is close. Oh, we're so close, guys. I just can't figure out how to incorporate the weapon icon. It, it just, all of it feels too, um, it feels too complicated. I'm going to answer a question for somebody really quick. I'll be right back, guys.
Sorry, guys. Um, I'm answering a question for the team here. I think we're going too hard with this now that I'm looking at it. We're going to start over. One more time. And that's okay. You know, it it really is. It's um Okay, dokie. Um, what we need to do, I've kind of got it figured out here. We need to take our weapon wheel here, this one. We need to merge it all together into, let's get the music playing again. I need to get in the right mood. We're going to take this and we're going to create a more simplistic looking piece of candy. I'm going to grab the heart spiral here. I feel like if we go brighter in the middle, it'll solve a lot of that problem with the red. Is that true, Thomas? It's not. Dang it. We're gonna freaking figure this out. Where can we fade it out and it still looks like a lolly? I think that might be okay. Hey, I think I've got it. Um, delete. And I wonder if we just need to be more precise. Just fade out little parts of it. Whew, this is tough. Game, Game Pip says, what is this song? I'm listening to music from the game that I wrote last week, trying to get into the mood. Where's the other one? Where is the track? There it is. Okay. This might work. I want to look at the UI in the game. Good. And now let's look at the candy. Oh. Maybe we do black. Maybe. I don't know. No. Does it look like a lolly? Let's, this is the question. This is the ultimate question. Does it look like a lolly with just this simple shape? We can try. Might need like a uh, a little bow. 
you know? That might, I mean, to me it's better because it's cleaner. Um, the problem is, is that that stripe is going to cause conflict with the imagery on top of it. And it's just the struggle we've been having this whole time. Use your brain, dude. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sus Sus Schizo says, did I just go through a time warp? Yeah. white outline on the guns maybe i mean if i look at the ui here let's try and identify why this looks so pretty um things are faded out so there's depth there's not really a lot of drop shadow but there's also these cool black lines and then outlines here um there's gradients but i wouldn't call it skeuomorphic you know um Let's throw the weapons on now. Okay. I mean, maybe. Here's another idea. Just do what we already were doing, which is you just mask it over one. Like this. No. Well, maybe. Thomas, come on, dude. You got to get it together. We shall discover it. And we shall know. We shall discover what to do here. Rotating gear. No, the lollipop is, is a good motif. That was a good idea though. Let's try this. We talked about a prize wheel. Rapid Dev says, how about, what does Rapid Dev say? When faded, what? We could do this, I have an idea. If we take this, scale it like this and place it inside of it, and then do a drop shadow of the same color, subtle and then put it over top like that it doesn't look good though it it works it just doesn't look good one more this was the closest we we got stuff like this so let's let's throw in all the weapons okay just bring them all in Kind of get an idea of what we're looking for. Kind of doesn't look like a lollipop anymore, though.
We might make them icons, yes. But we're going to get the shape correct here. Um, and these will all change because we're doing some weapon redesigns here. Uh, everything always changes, doesn't it, guys? We can probably get away with this. Let's see. It definitely feels more like a game show when they're sort of fanned out like this, you know? The pistol doesn't look good pointed exactly at that. Like if I did this, I'm not sure that looks good. Maybe it does. It's kind of cool, but now it looks like a game show wheel. Uh, it's like, I'm at the point now where I'm just like, whatever, let's just do this. And it just looks cool. Um, you know, what? I almost um, swore. We don't want to swear. Weapons are such a relative thing. Like, um, if you made them all the exact same width pixels, it would look weird. You have to sort of think about the the gaps that they fill in. So like this is really thin, so it may, to me it makes more sense that big. Okay, and we've got the Magnum here, but we also missing the, ah yes, there it is. All right, all right. Rapid dev. It's okay. One sec. By the way, those of you just joining us, remember you can join YouTube Game Dev below. 40% off for the next 13 days. After that, the course will close. It teaches you how to do what I do, how to start a YouTube channel dedicated to game development. For those of you who are curious, I do both, right? I make money from working with publishers, um, Kickstarter campaigns, uh, hitting the Steam front page, selling copies of my games, but also running a YouTube channel. You can do both. It's okay, guys. You can do. You can run three businesses. You can run four businesses, and have a constant drip of income. That's totally fine. Maybe make all the weapons like stamps on the candy pieces. That would be cool, like the sound effects. That'd be cool. This is a mess, is what it is. It's a mess. I hate it. What are we gonna do, guys? Hey, Alexa, can you turn on my fan? Okay, I'm gonna not save this. We're gonna open it up one more time. And I think I know what I, well, that looks better. I'm glad we, it looks better, yeah. I, I kinda just feel like the weapons need a stroke. And uh, that's about all it needs. And then if that was faded out like that, The design goal has been accomplished, Anthony. It's it's we selecting weapons on the weapon wheel. We already have the design goals. The visual goal is to harken back to this Alice in Wonderland vibe. It does look like an uncooked pizza, doesn't it? They just need a solid fill. I don't know why, but I'm leaning against it and I, I'm not listening to you guys. 
because I just can't see it. The, the, the solid color fill bugs me and I can't figure out why. But let's give it a go. Okay, we'll copy this layer style and we'll paste it. Yeah, that could work. It's all got to match, right? Everything has to match. Duplicate layers, bring it on over to the weapon wheel. Maybe they do point. Maybe it won't look so weird if they're in the center here. It would be cool if it was candy, like you could hear it. And then when you when you select it, it's look how GTA does their weapon angles. Okay. G T Grand Theft Auto, which one? Weapon wheel. Yeah, they're just random. They just picked a good angle. So, yeah. Um, Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah. Yeah, they're all straight. Straight, it does feel better when it's straight. It's just hard because some of these weapons are really l like long. So it's gonna be, some of them have to stick out like this. It's just weird. But it's not horrible. So. Double check on the team, see how they're doing. Everybody is good. Pace layer style. Magnum. <sighs> Frustrating. It's not the worst thing ever. It's just, it's not perfect, you know? It's just not perfect. And that is the bane of our existence as game developers, isn't it, guys? It's not perfect. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like you don't have weapons yet. I agree. You think they should follow the peace angles, guys? Yeah, it looks like you don't have them yet. See, it's not pizza though. That's the problem, Trojan Trojan Ski. It's not pizza. That's a mess. My give up. My give up. 
Let's go back to the weapon wheel. And oddly enough, I'm almost at the point where I say, I don't know if it's worth it. You know, there's, I feel like, why not just do this and add, oh, come on, you can figure it out, Thomas. Make the guns playing cards. Seb, Seb. What did you just say, Seb? Make the guns playing cards. That is so smart. Yeah, I agree. If you're trying to convince yourself, you're lying. So with the, I want it to be a wheel though, right? So if they were playing cards, Seb, that is a great idea. If they were playing cards, how would this work, right? Would you have, would it be a fan like this? So we have like, let's do drop shadows. Let's just do a very simplistic card here. A hand of cards, I love that. It's so, so important, guys, to make sure you're hearkening back to your theme. Fan them out, okay. They might need to be a little bit tall. Maybe taller than a typical hand of cards. Seb wins. Good job, Sebby. So it'd be like this. The problem is I'll need to do some sorting in the code so they sort properly. I do wonder, I, I, I think it would work even if they were almost like just straight, you just, because I think the code is, is fine to do that. Um, let's see if the code will allow us to do that first, okay guys? So let's, let's um, cause I wanna figure out how much room I have here. How many cards I can lay out? Cause right here we have eight. Something like this is the idea. I think it's brilliant. Seb, that's a really good idea, bud. Um, and you'll just... Okay, so the next thought here is I'm just gonna screw with my uh, UI. Uh, let's go to our controller. And we're gonna go to our weapon wheel. I believe it's inside of our canvas. There it is. Now, if I were to take this and make a sort of fan out of it, let's, let's go ahead and make sure this is all correct though. Uh, if I just enable this layer, it should work. missing all the sprites. So what we need to do is close Unity. Um, I'm gonna screenshot this and then paste it inside of a new Photoshop file because we just screwed up all the UI. So we need to go to GitHub, thank God. We need to go to GitHub and clear it out. All that stuff. Um, I, love, I love GitHub because it allows you to edit undo before even if you can't edit undo, right? Um, okay, let's go back to Unity, and it should be, everything should be good. Um, this weapon wheel, we close this. I think that's the best solution, honestly, is a, is a deck of cards. How sick would it be when you press tab, they go and they close. Okay, so GitHub got us back to where we were. 
We're going to open up Unity really quick. And we shall go from there. Sorry, Unity's taking forever. All right, let's hit play and take a look and see if it looks any good. It should, everything should be back to normal. Yay, okay. So you can imagine these would be cards, right? Um, in a circle, no, because that would be too tight. So in a half circle, yes. Oh man, that sucks. Is it based on hover or is it based on mouse position? Because if it's based on mouse position, we're screwed. Card wheel. How, how, how would this look if I were to take this? I, I know for a fact this isn't gonna work. Well, let's, let's, let's just try it out, okay? Open up the canvas and let's just lay out the weapon wheel in an awful way. Um, I don't know what that is, but let's go ahead and just take this stuff and I'm just gonna position it over here high up we're gonna create like a card pattern just something simple it's not gonna work I guarantee you maybe it will maybe it's based on the ID and not the position you know which would be fine because then you could just but it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense it just wouldn't make sense oh, it wouldn't make sense with the with the gamepad unless we divided the gamepad position by two um, that might be a solution we don't want to break the system guys Needler rocket launcher and then this uh, rifle I just want to see if this even works so something like this let's see what happens um, we'll turn that back on and then turn everything off save hit play and take a look okay Okay, so the next question is, can we make a deck of cards fan out in a circle and it be legible? You know, um, so what I'm going to do is if I had how small do I have to make the cards guys to get this to work? I feel like we need to go like that small. Drop shadow, put a stroke mm -hmm. on there. Inside. Set it to normal. What? Whatever, I don't know why it looks like that, but okay. All right, let's see. One, two, three. So you might have to do something like this. One, two, three. We might be able to get away with it actually. Three. How many do we need? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if we take a look at um let's discard our changes really quick. Oh, 
Oh no, my camera died. Thomas, we can't see your face. So we have one, look at that. It's all screwed up now. It's so weird. Why is that? Now it's, now it's good. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we have 10 weapons. So that means four all the way down until 90 degrees, which could work. Where's the weapon wheel? Let's just look at it. Use your brain, dude. Oh, wow. Well. <clears throat> That's not bad at all. So it's uh, five, five on the <clears throat> right side and five on the left side. We may be able to do this. Just be very, very even about everything. Yeah, I think this could work, actually. I think there's plenty, might be plenty of room. It would be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so here's the solution. Open up our weapon wheel. We're gonna disable the weapon wheel and we're gonna do a card. We're gonna do a generic card. No, I'm, I don't think I'm overthinking it. First of Fist of Legends, I think we're we're trying to make sure everything's on our. I appreciate your kind words, but I think you really want to make sure you. Let's find a vintage card. So let's go to Google here, vintage deck of our uh, Art Deco cards, playing cards. Oh my goodness, this is going to be too fun. Oh, goody. I love it. Maybe we could put the ammo where the... Where do you guys think the ammo should be? I kind of think it should be at like... Actually, I'm not sure. But we will do not a line instead we will do a thin line on the center like so like this yeah you'll notice that the uh this is something that a lot of ui designers miss you want the, you can't use the same corner radius. You need to use a sharper one. So in this case, it'll be something like 10. Yeah. So as we go in closer, it gets sharper. So we want a very generic card design. No, we're not gonna use AI. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, good enough for me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade out this corner here. We'll do a little bit of fading just to make it look like it's kind of metallic. And then we're gonna do Art Deco. This is, this is so good because the Art Deco flourishes are wonderful in our... That one looks perfect, actually. This kind of looks like Art Nouveau. Perfection. Color overlay. We'll just do an overlay here. Good. And then remember, we're just going to take this. And in fact, I 
think those might be a little too thick. So we're going to do this. Scale this up. So it's almost as thick. And then fade out the edge. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea is make it reflect the idea the the personality of the gun. I agree 100%. But we do want to have a generic card design here that we can use over and over. And I think that's great, you know, right there. Um, goody, 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 goody. Uh, so next, next. Um, you have to really communicate a lot uh, in this small space. So you got to be very, very careful. Um, do we have any texture work on the UI? It looks very clean, so I don't think so. So we want to, yeah, keep it very simple. Okay. So yeah, um, you know, we may be able to get away with a stroke. Let's just try it. Outside, black, and then one more stroke, which would be white. Uh, set it to 10. And then potentially do a gradient fill of that with zero opacity. And then the other side is that. And then drop down this, the opacity of the entire thing. It looks really clean. I like it a lot. We're going to convert that to a smart object. And we're going to see how this looks all fanned out. So it's as simple, I think, as doing this. And then two here, two here, two here. I actually just take these two, fan them just a little bit like that. I don't like the stroke. One sec, guys. I think we just need a drop shadow. We just need to go probably a little bit smaller. We're going to have to be really big and bold with what the icon is because these are small enough. And I think it would be it's a risk to do too many or make it too small. OK, so we take all of these and just do this. And then one more goody. Problem. The problem is the opacity. So instead of them going to a low opacity when they're not selected, they need to go darker. Um, and also, let's go ahead and sort them properly. Come on, what in the world? So annoying. So we'll start with this one at the top and make our way down. Yeah, we could probably make them closer to each other, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so we could probably do this and then this and then one more yeah yeah that's not bad we could guys could we get away with even closer I think that's as much as I want to go honestly All right, bring this one to the top. Yeah, definitely going to have a not a spin effect, but they're going to scale up and they're going to go. Shh, 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 shh. That's the sound that's going to be when you're sorting through all of your guns. And I like it because a card sort of implies, um, you know, a tool. It's like what what a card does a certain thing, so does a gun. So I, can, I think that's kind of cool. I 
why that drop shadow is so intense right there, but right there it's not. You know? Oh, I see. I know. Um, it's because the drop shadow has a distance. So we're going to change the distance. Click OK. Copy layer style. We're going to clear the layer style from all of these. And then paste the layer style. There we go. It's not bad. Um, it, you know, I think what we need to do is have it layered down on both sides like this. We got to be as clean as possible because it's getting overwhelming. And so we just want to make sure that we're not overwhelming the player and that we're giving them as much cleanliness as possible. Yep. Cool. All right. I think it can work, guys. Now, one thing we want to do, though, you want to create some, you want to, I don't know what the word is, but you want to remove as much visual detailing. I know that sounds weird as possible um, if you can. So I'm going to basically, over top of this, I'm going to add some darkness. We just don't want it to be too in your face. That does look really cool, you know? And then you can imagine each card has a weapon. That took a while, and I think in terms of I ideation, guys, that was that was literally an, two hours of ideation, and I think that that's a an important thing to take note of, which is whether you're starting a business, whether you're starting a writing a graphic novel, whether you're making a movie or you're making a video game, or planning out a YouTube video for your YouTube channel. Sometimes it's best to just spend two hours coming up with an idea or asking around and brainstorming with other people. Who was the person who came up with this idea for the cards? I think it's a brilliant idea. I love it. Who was that person? Who was that? Seb? Let's give a round of applause to Seb with some applause emojis. That's awesome. Seb, it was a really good idea. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you for coming up with that. Very, very cool. I loved it. It's a great idea. Just a reminder, guys, this video is sponsored by, well, by my own products. I like to keep sponsorships independent. I don't like taking sponsorships other than my own courses and my own products. And it does mean a lot to me when you guys enroll and honestly, yes, it does help the channel, but it's an investment in your future. And if you're a YouTube game dev student, let me know in the chat what you think about the program. But YouTube game dev is currently open. It's open for 11 more days. You can get 40% off the program. And it's a massive program that not only features me, but it also features Blackthorn Prod. It features Jonas Tie Roller, uh, Two Star Games, and actually Bra um, one, of the, one of the producers at Brackies, um, which is, they're no longer making videos, but his name is Andreas. Um, it's a really awesome program because it teaches you how to turn a YouTube game development channel like this one into money, which I'm frankly doing right now, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm doing an ad read. I'm doing a sponsored ad read. Not only do I make games for a living, but I also run multiple businesses. One of them is my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to learn how to do it and focus it on your games so that you can make games, do it on camera, get funding for your games from YouTube, check out the link below. There's a ton of ways to make money. I will see you at the program. Thanks so much, guys. I will hang out with you maybe tomorrow. We might live stream tomorrow. See you around. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. 
if you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too.